the relationship between the aggregates. The five aggregates are interdependent. The aggregate of corporeality, rupakanda, comprises the body, while the four aggregates of mentality, namakanda, make up the mind. Human life requires both body and the mind. When the body and mind function normally and operate in unison, life progresses well. Mental activities, for example, require an understanding of the external world, and this understanding relies on sense data. Visual forms, sounds, odors, tastes, and tangible objects. Entering by way of the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, both the five sense objects and the five sense faculties are material things, rupadhamma, and part of the aggregate of corporeality. They are part of materiality. In this chapter, the emphasis is on the mind, considering the body to be similar to a ready-made instrument prepared to serve mental activities. The mind is considered to be the focal point of life, and its range of functions is vast, complex and profound. The mind gives value and meaning to life, and it is directly connected to the teachings by the Buddha presented in this book. The four aggregates of mentality are intimately related and influencing and conditioning one another. The arising of these four aggregates is ordinarily outlined in the following way. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Similarly with the ear and sounds, the nose and odours, etc. The meeting of the three is contact. With contact as condition there is feeling. What one feels, that one perceives. What one perceives, that one thinks about. Here is an example. Gordon hears the sound of a bell. Ear plus sound plus ear consciousness. He finds the sound pleasant equals Vedana. He perceives the sound as melodious, the ringing of a bell, and the sound of a melodious bell equals Sanya. He likes the sound and wants to hear it again. He thinks about striking that bell himself. He wants to obtain the bell. He thinks about buying or stealing the bell, etc. equals Sankara. Note the crucial role of feeling Vedana in this process. Perception Sanya pays particular focus on those objects providing pleasurable sensations. The greater and the greater the pleasure, the greater the importance bestowed on the object of perception. In addition, such pleasurable feeling incites people to think and act in accord to increase the pleasure. One may describe this as a basic, ordinary or elementary process. In this process, feeling Vedana acts as incentive, similar to a person who invites one to take something or to refuse and avoid it. Perception Sanya is similar to a person who gathers and stores data or raw material. Mental formations, Sankara, resemble a person who takes this raw material 
and shapes it in preparation for work. Consciousness Vinyana is similar to the director of the work, aware of everyone else's activities. It both opens the way for the work to be performed and it receives the results of the work. One complex aspect of this process is that a feeling Vedana does not act as a catalyst for the other aggregates in a one-sided way. The other aggregates too have an influence over feeling. Take the example of a single piece of music that one person listens to and finds delightful whereas another person listens to it and feels depressed. Similarly, the same person may listen to a song at one time and feel elated, while at another time he may feel disturbed by it. A general principle is that those things that one likes and finds pleasure in correspond to one's desire. When one encounters them, one is happy. Inversely, those things one dislikes conflict with one's desire. When one encounters these things, one suffers. The mental formations, say of liking, disliking, desire and aversion, then condition another round of feeling. Here perception is also engaged, that is mental formations, conditioned perception, which in turn influences feeling. Here is an example, a person may see someone whom he admires behave in a particular way and perceive that behaviour as lovely or endearing. And he may witness other behaviour by someone he dislikes and perceive it as annoying or abhorrent. Later he may encounter others exhibiting such behaviour which he has previously perceived as either endearing or annoying, sanya, and as a result feel either delighted or distressed, vedana, and either approve of or be angered by it, sankara. This interrelationship between the aggregates can be even more complex. Take, for example, a work project or study lesson that is difficult and demanding. Performing the task alone may involve much turmoil and discomfort, causing one to be disinclined from engaging with it. Yet, if there are particular incentives, one may be more interested and determined to do the work or to pursue the lesson. These incentives may be pleasurable sensations in the present. For example, the method of learning is fun and entertaining, or there may be elaborate matters associated with perceptions of future pleasure say of gaining a reward, achieving success, or deriving some benefit, either for oneself or for others. These perceptions are dependent on various mental formations, for example craving tanha, conceit mana, and wisdom panya which then lead to further perceptions by bestowing meaning, value and importance to the work or study. Moreover, one now experiences pleasure while performing the deed, 
Although one may feel physical discomfort, one's mind is imbued with joy, making one more eager to do the work or to complete the lesson. When the school bell rings in the late afternoon, the students hear the sound, Winyana. Having heard this sound every day, they feel neutral about it, Vedana. All of them identify the sound as the bell denoting the end of the school day, Sanya. Some children may be delighted, Sukha Vedana plus Sankara, because they ache from sitting all day and may now go out to play, accompanying perceptions. Other children may be sad, Dukkha Vedana and Sankara, because they must interrupt a useful and valuable lesson or because they must return to unkind and intimidating guardians, accompanying perceptions. This entire process, beginning with consciousness, is an intricate interrelationship of causes and conditions, which together create people's personalities and determine each person's unique fortune and destiny. Volitional formations, Sankara, represented by intention, Chaitana, are the agents which, sh which shape and mould the process, and in this context Sankara is the technical name for volitional action, Kama. Inversely, Kama is the informal title for volitional formations, representing them when they are actively operative. It is the term used when referring to the crucial role that volitional formations play. Example, it is Kama that distinguishes beings as inferior and superior. Beings exist according to their karma.